You may be seated. On behalf of Eddie and Claudia and their families, we thank you for being here today. Uh, your presence uh, says something without you saying anything. It says that this week, beautiful lady means something to you and that you love her and you love this family and you're here uh, to walk together with them in, in their time of loss and their grief. Um, I'll give you some permissions today. Cry all you need to. Laugh when you need to. Uh, but remember, and remember fondly, uh, this beautiful woman who's beautiful on the inside and out. And um, we'll hear a couple of songs and hear some fam from family today as well. Jesus said these words in the third chapter of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son to the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the life of Claudia. Help us today, Father, as we remember and honor her and honor you and honor her family. Uh, we pray, Father, for your spirit of comfort to fill us, uh, your spirit of memory uh, to guide us today, and your spirit of love uh, to pour out to this dear family. We pray this through Jesus. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away, fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll Good morning. So Claudia was born on July 8, 1946, to Hollis and Lurie Thornton in Floydata, Texas, so an area that's kind of close to my heart for sure. She grew up in her early childhood at the Children's Home of Lubbock and attended Roosevelt schools and specifically Roosevelt High School. She was a great athlete, participated in basketball, lettered all four years during her time in, in Lubbock. Um, and that really carried on throughout her life. I think that, that basketball was just the beginning. She always spoke fondly of her time at Roosevelt and growing up at the children's home. It was a very fond memory for, for her. And, you know, Lubbock is very near and dear to our hearts as well. She continued her career, lifelong career as a cosmetologist. It began back in Lubbock, but uh, continued all throughout her life. She started in West Texas, made her way to DFW, Metroplex, and spent the last 20 years here in Marble Falls. Claudia was an avid golfer, always participating in golf, golf tournaments, golf associations, um, not only just participating in the golf tournaments, but really 
getting into it and organizing and spending time and enjoying the camaraderie with her friends and fellow golfers. It was always, golf was always a big part of our family, um, you know, top to bottom, watching golf, participating in golf. It, it was just a big thing and brought a lot of joy to her throughout her entire life. So we found ourselves looking at photos recently. Uh, you know, the slideshow became my responsibility uh, in this past few days. And so I hope you'll notice when you look at these slideshows that there are many, many smiling faces. I, I, I think almost all of them were smiling faces. She enjoyed time with her grandkids, uh, definitely cooking, baking, and watching cooking and baking uh, on the TV. <laughs> So, specifically, Emery cannot turn away from a, you know, cake boss or cooking, cooking channel, cooking competitions specifically is, is the ones that, that she really loves. So, um, anytime uh, Emery's got control of the remote, we are sure watching something about cooking. So, um, but that was just a big part of what she shared with, with Emery, and, and they, uh, they really enjoyed it, enjoyed it doing it together. So I'll tell you that friends uh, were definitely something that was important to Claudia. And, and many of you know her time at the beauty shop uh, was, although I guess it was her job or profession, but I know for sure it was not about really being a job. These were her friends, lifelong friends. Um, she felt, um, I don't think even obligated is the right word to describe um, how she felt about, you know, being with her friends and, and getting their hair done or nails done or whatever it may be. This was um, not only just an important part of her life, like an extremely important part of her life. So Claudia moved to Marble Falls about 20 years ago um, and continued her career doing this. But once a month, I, I don't know if all of you know, once a month she made the journey back to DFW, I think to spend time with us, but also to spend time with her clients. She would rent a space in her, uh, in a salon and go back and, and um, do the hair and nails of, of these lifelong friends, some of which I, I think 35, 40 years she had, she had been um, uh, serving some of her clients. So, um, you know, we tried to talk her out of it and say, hey, would you just quit driving back and forth? You know, is this really important? But it was, there was no, absolutely no talking her out of this part of her life. And so I can't stress how important that was to her. So family was also something that was very important. And we've looked at these pictures and photographs over the years and all the smiles. She's always with uh, one of her family members. And it was, it was really, really important for her to be around uh, family members. So we took a trip to Graceland a few years ago. It was kind of a, a lifelong thing that she always wanted to do, and she always had this love of Elvis. Um, we really have fond memories of that trip, lots of, lots of smiles and lots of good times on that one. She also enjoyed, enjoyed a, a, tri a tri trip to uh, New York uh, a few years ago with, with Tanya and some of the other family. And it was another just really great time and, and tons of photos and smiles from that one. So it, it just rings in my heart about how important those family and doing things with family was to her. She was really our, the leader of, of family. Uh, she played a big role in bringing things together and always was bold but compassionate when when leading her family. So in closing, I really think she's touched many of your lives. I know she's touched ours. She will be missed. Thank you.
The sage of Proverbs wrote these words. I can't say for sure he had Claudia in mind, but, but I think so. An excellent wife who can find, she's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchants. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night, provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of the hand, her hand, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hand to the distaff and holds her hands to the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for her household are all clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is of fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchants. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her lips. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Can I tell you something? And I don't want to appear like an old curmudgeon, but I'm getting older like an old curmudgeon. I miss the 80s. I miss phones without cameras. And I miss cars without GPSs. I like maps. I miss the inability to text someone. I miss not having to rely on the app for everything. You can't even order food anymore without an app, right? But what I really miss about the 80s is conversations, which brings me to Claudia. See, this incredible relationship that we call marriage between Claudia and this good-looking guy named Eddie started with a conversation over an endless cup of coffee at a Denny's restaurant in Grand Prairie, Prairie, Texas. Now look, I know you got some thoughts about Denny's, but two good things have come out of Denny's in my opinion. Their breakfast sandwich, Moon Over My Hammies, and Claudia and Eddie. <laughs> that night got started after a golf outing and a random dance, maybe with a little prompting from someone. Claudia took the lead. Claudia was a trustworthy spouse. She was all in and committed to Eddie, and with him, I think they understood the concept of marital covenant. See, in covenants, there's no out clause, just a promise to persevere. And in covenants, there are ongoing conversations. She was a great conversationalist. Through almost 35 years of good times and difficult times, through laughter and tears, uh, for those great uh, birdies and those inevitable double bogeys, Claudia has done Eddie good all the days of her life. And if I think about what the sage of Proverbs says, Claudia is skillful. You know, there's some people that are just good at everything. 
I really don't like those kind of people that make everything look easy. Because, you know, when, 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 they, when you're in their presence, they, make you, they can make you feel so inadequate and inferior. But Claudia was just so charming, right? And so, I mean, she was good at what she did, but so charming, you couldn't help but like her. Despite the fact that you knew she was more talented than you were when you talked to her. You know, what I really appreciate about her is when you were in Claudia's presence, you never felt less than. You always felt important. Like you were the center of whatever was going on in that moment. And unlike a lot of talented people, Claudia was willing to share her talents and invites us to succeed with her and to learn from her and to learn with her. As Luke mentioned, she's a tremendous athlete, a wizard with a basketball or a tennis racket or a pair of track shoes and a golf ball. I love playing golf tournaments with Eddie and with the ladies' golf group, especially those goofy tournaments where you dress up. Now listen, I live out in Meadow Lakes in the hood, and every October there's a bunch of witches running around on the golf course. I don't know. Fun. See, those talents of golf and athleticism were not about golf and athleticism. They were just a time to talk to people, to be a conversationalist, to learn about people and to share with people and to pour into people. She's also a good cook, chicken fried steak and chili rellenos and that famous cornbread dressing. You can kind of smell it and taste it now, can't you? And you know what's amazing about really talented cooks and people who are comfortable with their talent is they don't keep recipes to themselves, they pass them on. So this Thanksgiving, you're going to get to try that dressing again because it got passed on to one of her granddaughters. And Claudia was truly a, this talent that she has, an artisan with hair. For six decades, she would take the most unruly mops and take some scissors, rollers, and colors and a blow dryer and create her own form of a Monet or a Picasso. And just as an artist never really travels without brushes and canvas, Claudia never went anywhere without scissors and brushes and combs. I suspect that many of you here today are the product of her artistic skills in some way or another. Even some of you who don't have much hair anymore may be a part of that. And she ran a business. That is hard. I was a former owner of, a, of several small businesses. It is hard to run a business. Think about all the skills that it takes to juggle schedules and supplies and coworkers and clients and cash flow and those inevitable taxes you have to pay and insurance. And in spite of all that, still have time for family and for friends and for church. By the way, her seat's there at the back. It's reserved when she was here. And that's talent, isn't it? Skill. And she made it look so easy. And you don't want to like her because she did that, but you can't help but love her because of who she is. She's hospitable. You know, her chair and her shop was not really, and Luke alluded to this, not really just a place of business. It was a safe place place to share experiences, a place to celebrate relationships, a place to connect with people in the community and with families. It was a place of service. Many of her clients and customers were not really that, they're friends. 20, 30 years, week after week. See, I think for Claudia, her shop was simply the platform to be the hands and feet of Jesus to people. And people who are hospitable like her not only invite you into their world, they graciously enter yours. And I believe it was Claudia's willingness to enter the world of others that often opened the door for service for her. And she might do that by saying, hey, the haircut's on the house today. Or she may show up your, at your house with something to eat. Or maybe just come by and take you out for a round of golf. But hospitality is a two-way street. She was good at it, good at it. She loved hosting her grandkids. For them, the best hotel in the world were the welcoming and loving arms of Nana. It didn't matter, that was always five star when they were with her. 
And I do believe this, that hospitality, when you're hospitable and you have that kind of, of nature and that kind of focus, hospitality is a natural conduit for caregiving. And you can't be a caregiver if you don't love people. Claudia loves people and found ways to give. A great example of her caring is when she graduated from high school and her younger brother was still in the children's home. He wasn't, she wasn't going to leave him there by himself. She came to live with, her, with, with Claudia. And later in life, she cared for her mother. Hospitality. She was wise. You know, she could have been bitter about being taken at a young age to live at a children's home. Instead, she learned from those experiences. It shaped her. She learned to be self-reliant and responsible and creative. She learned how to cook and to sew. Mostly, she learned how to persevere. Through social stigmas of being a home kid, uh, to persevering through cancer treatments, she learned to forgive and learned to love unconditionally. She was strong, strong. She loved tenaciously, didn't she? Pursued people with love. And she lived joyously and she gave unselfishly and learned new things with confidence and she endured her battle with cancer with relentless dignity and optimism and would not allow that disease to define who she was and who she is. Nor did it harden her heart. See, like the worthy woman of Proverbs 31, Claudia found her strength in God and in family, in her long-term friends who we might call customers or clients, but to Claudia they were friends and in a church family. The sage of Proverbs says this, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Today we say thank you, Claudia, for just being you, because just being you is a lot. My mom loved the color blue, but she rarely let herself feel that way. So today, we're going to do as she did. We're going to press on, lean on our faith, and have hope. We're going to honor her life. And instead of mourning, we ask that you join us in rejoicing that we got to be a part of her journey. And she made such a difference in our lives. We want to thank you for coming today to celebrate an amazing mom wife, nana, sister, daughter, friend, caregiver, master of all things hair, and so much more to all those who knew her. Thank you for allowing her to serve out her purpose. She was fulfilled by doing for others, and in the process, she built amazing friendships and held lots of treasured memories close to her heart. In her final months, her pace was forced to slow down. That wasn't easy for her, but her friends and family returned the favor, lifting her up in prayer, keeping her company, sending cards, many phone calls, even honoring her with an award from the local ladies' golf association in December, things she had always done for others. Again, we thank you. She thanks you. She had a fight and will like no other. She always managed to press on. In the end, when her body was frail, her spirit was mighty. I'm not sure who is going to cut my hair. After all, she did it for over 40 years. Or who is going to answer my many daily calls. But I know that her voice and spirit will never be forgotten. It is safely saved in each of our hearts. I know it was a glorious reunion between a mother and son, mother and daughter, between her sister and brother, and many family and friends. It definitely broke our hearts to lose her. 
and although it's never the right time to let go, we feel blessed to have known her love. She will always be someone special. Just now, she's decorating the heavens instead of the salon. I'm sure she has cut and colored all of her fellow angels' hair. She's hitting the jackpot with every spin. She's still cooking up all things fried in an iron skillet. And no doubt she'll be making her famous dressing at Thanksgiving. And she's hitting each ball right down the middle. Mom, Nana, Claudia, Claudia, until we meet again, we all love you. My daughters, Nana's girls, have something a little special they'd like to share as a tribute to their Nana. You want to come up? I'm Emery. And I'm Riley. And she's our Nana. About a year ago, I started writing a song about how wonderful she is. I did not get a chance to play it for her until my mom did the day she went to heaven. I wanted to play it today, so my music teacher helped me record it. Nana, we love you so much, and I will always treasure you in my heart. We will always remember those fun memories. Thank you, Emery. Thank you, Riley, for sharing that with us. So it's a hard day. And you're making it just a little more manageable by being here today, and we're grateful for that. Uh, I'm going to have a prayer, and then I'm going to lead the family over to the fellowship hall. And once they get situated, you'll be dismissed. Feel free to come and visit and sit down. There's coffee and tea and water over there, and I know they'll enjoy hugging your neck and, and hearing some stories and just uh, reflecting on uh, this good life. Let's pray. Father God, fill us with your peace. Fill us with your hope. Fill us with your joy. And fill us with your love. Uh, as we remember uh, Claudia and Eddie and their families today, 
Father, use us as instruments of peace and of demonstrations of love and expressions of hope uh, to this family. Uh, may we grieve well. And may we grieve together with them, not only today, but in the days to come. Uh, we're so grateful for Jesus, who is the giver of all good things, who is the giver of life and the giver of hope, the giver of peace and the giver of comfort. And we lean into him today uh, as we remember. Again, thank you so much for the life of Claudia. And we pray this through Jesus. Amen.